uh, really aren't just a coffee maker company. It's just a sideline with them. Their real business is automobile headlamps. If you own a Toyota, uh, you likely already own at least two Hario products, and they're right uh, at the very front of your car. I've been a fan for more than 10 years. Uh, I, I, I'm actually sure it's been a lot longer than that, but I, I, I know I can say 10 years and not worry. I found that I'd recently, uh, I'd come to realize I might like to spend my future retirement, uh, maybe, I don't know, taking holy orders, quietly making small batches of perfect coffee at a monastery, at the siphon, or do you say vacuum, or simply glass coffee maker. Anyway, my current theory is that we're all potentially coming to nest on what might be called the first repeatable, consistent, reliable, and highest definition method of all, and that is the siphon. Here's how it goes at my house. I get a sack of coffee with the usual pleading letter from some famous coffee roaster, uh, George Howell. Oh, please, Kevin, tell me the notes you get in this Colombian Nariño I just paid too much for. That last part is code for, and Lori is going to kill me when I tell her that I can no longer, she can no longer afford this or that uh, whatever piece of furniture. As I've mortgaged the house on yet another cup of excellence coffee, it doesn't really taste as special without the story told to you as you sip. Well, let's get the water hot. Um, it needs to be boiling, and for this, here's the, here's the one money-saving part of this whole operation. You can use the least expensive kettle you can pick up in a thrift shop. Any kettle will do. If it can boil, it's all you need. Speaking of which, I do the logical thing. I brew up George's coffee in my, of the month in my Chemex, my go-to for almost any coffee. I get an overall pleasant experience. It's George's coffee, all right, but the Chemex gives you a, a great, clean, but in effect, a meld of ingredients. In some ways, it is ideal for tasting uh, and, and uh, as a coffee lover, but not truly an analytical tool. And that's part of its charm. There's no doubt about that. I then try an automatic drip maker uh, maybe uh, something you know, ex even fairly extravagant, that I've, one that I'm reviewing right now, which is meeting its uh, standards, by the way. But then, then I'll try a press. Finally, when I'm really frustrated, I have to go to what should have been square one, and that's the siphon. The siphon's water won't rise to the upper bowl out of this one, where the brewing alchemy really happens, unless it is boiling, and near boiling, I should say, because once it really, it's boiling down below, it rises to the tube, it's never boiling. That's its greatest virtue. It is virtually the organic, automatic, perfect brewing temperature brewer of all time. I continuously tweak my siphon brewing method. I attended a Hario, uh, a Hario uh, soiree, a party, two years ago in New York City, where I met the recently crowned, I guess I should just call it the city, right, after all, where I recently met the recently crowned world champion barista siphon champion, who told me he'd just begun using coarser grinds for his own siphon. This is after he won the world championship. He's still tweaking his siphon uh, method. The siphon is a method that you... You can use consistently as you wish, or you can make uh, endlessly manual. And either way, it can deliver. It delivers wonderful flavor, and I think uh, you may find it uh, a trifle addicting. I mean, you just it's one of those brewers. Okay, let's uh, let's get things going here. I've got to put the water in, and uh, it's I, it's just stopped boiling, and let's get it. I always boil it in something else again. Never boil it in the uh, brewer. Yeah, you can if you uh, start this morning and maybe you want to brew this early this afternoon. I'm, I'm probably exaggerating, but not, not by too much. Let's see. This is just the, the, the simplest way to do it, and uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way at all, uh, other than uh, I'm sure the aesthetic would bother someone who has an email. Uh, okay, and then let's turn this on below the heating element. Let's get this 
uh, going. Now, I, I must point out, in fact, a number of ways I'm going to try to give you a, uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, is there a way to get uh, this uh, thermometer? Uh, do you want to back off on that or do you want to just get it from the side brewer uh, camera? Uh, there we go. Oh, that's perfect. Nicely done. See, 202, that's, that's a great brewing temperature, but that's not enough oomph to get it through. And we'll put these together and you'll see. It's going to take a few minutes, okay? All right. Oh, man. Okay. I am now putting them together. Now, uh, let's, uh, we'll talk about that in a second, too. I put them together the moment I put the hot water in here. For one thing, it, it, uh, there's no, you know, you don't want to, you just put it together and then eventually you'll hear it. I'm sure you can hear it through our extremely sensitive, extravagant microphone. Um, Lori's not the only one that worries about the spending. I'm using 40 grams of a medium dry, medium fine drip grind coffee. Say that 20 times uh, real fast. Okay, and I'm using this coffee, which is a beautiful coffee uh, that uh, Mike Perry at Clatch roasted. I, I don't know if Mike really roasted it, but someone at Clatch roasted it, and uh, it could be Todd or it could be a number of people. Uh, this particular Hario siphon comes, by the way, with both a permanent metal mesh filter as well as a cloth filter, and you'll notice here of course, I, I've made batches with both, but I honestly prefer the cloth. It's a cleaner cup. Uh, it also, it's closer to paper. It is what paper would ideally be if paper could be made to be exactly like cloth. And I would argue the company that comes the closest to making paper like cloth is Chemex. So that's a whole other segment. So let's, uh, let's keep it to one brand at a time. I know that is uh, very hard for brands to hear each other's names. Uh, it's just a cleaner cup. It also uh, can affect the final stage when the coffee is sucked, hence the name vacuum. Uh, that's where that came from. Uh, back below through the filter. Now, I would like to point out um, that uh, I found the metal filter to be slightly faster it, uh, when the coffee comes back. But it's not to any significant taste change. And uh, it's one of those things where I probably would say, uh, ignore it. There are two ways of using a siphon. One involves the early assembly, like, uh, well, I didn't do an early assembly, actually I'm doing it, where, where you just all goes together and then you start heating. Uh, for an automatic siphon, uh, Bodum makes an automatic siphon, there I go using another brand again. Um, this, is, uh, this is a foredrawn conclusion. However, I'm using the most common manual method, where it's all left until the water is at full boil before a final assembly. And as you can see below, uh, well, if you can get the shot of it uh, below, is uh, there. It's boiling below, but it's not boiling above. In fact, I'll show you that. Uh, I was going to wait until a little later, but that's okay. I can show it to you right now, and I guarantee you it is not boiling. If we can, can we get a, uh, uh, there we are, 173. I mean, that's a far cry from boiling. So just... Understand, I know a lot of times people look at the lower bowl and say, oh, well, that, that's, that's, that's like percolator coffee. No, it's not. Okay, so don't worry about it. Okay, 183, 184, it's getting, into, it's getting into there, and you'll see that's why I wait to put the coffee in. I do not put the coffee in right now. If you're talking about an extremely powerful, you know, 1,000-watt engine like, a, uh, like the uh, famous uh, Sunbeam uh, series coffee makers, which are automatic, they do. They 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 use a virtual nuclear explosion to get the water up there, and that it will arrive uh, nice and hot. Okay, but right now, okay, now let's take a look at that temperature. Let's get that wide shot again. For one thing, oh, there we go. See now, 196. We're now at brewing temperature, so now it's time to put the uh, the coffee in, and it's also time to start a timer. And this is the type of thing that I'm so pleased with myself because. I usually forget. Okay, and let's put it on stopwatch feature on my LG phone. I don't know if that's good for a free tune-up or something. <laughs> hey, both viewers heard your name. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to start this. And uh, now, you'll notice, 
I'm just stirring enough that I, just enough to get all the grounds wet. No more. I'm not doing a whole bunch of stirring. You know, you don't really have to. There's a, there's a, a turbulence to this that comes from below that will, that will happen more and more as we go along here. And we're already 30 seconds into the brew. Uh, and, uh, and, and by the way, make sure that filter is in there before you put this together. Uh, it's, uh, it, I know uh, I did it uh, correctly today, but I've left it out uh, in, at least once. I, I've tried to commit every possible mistake you can make with this method. And um, I think I'm short once, so I may uh, make one more just to make uh, get my perfect record today. Now. We take that boiling water, it's okay, it's in the lower bowl, the two halves are together, and then a minute, we are at a minute, one minute into, the, into this, what happens is there tends to be a tendency to accumulate those grounds and just give another little stir, just to make sure they're all getting nice and wet. Some of them try to flee their responsibility and uh, this method is really foolproof. Here, let's go, let's do a temperature read again. Where are we? 197. You know, that's not too hot. I mean, it's that's that's it's 200 degrees. Well, do you ever wonder where they where the brewing standards came from? I have it on pretty good authority that the original tests that established the gold cup standards were made on a on a siphon coffee maker, by the way. Now, this is at, uh, I want to point out, this is, I'm at, I'm pretty close in the Midwest here. I'm pretty close to sea level, a uh, little bit above, but not much. And, uh, okay, now we're at uh, two minutes, so we're going to, we're a little late there. I'm going to shut this off. And uh, I could have turned it down for the last 30 seconds. I normally do, but it's not a big deal. It should, uh, you saw, the temperature was, the whole time was well within the gold cup standards. And by the way, it will, it will, um, you don't have to do much to, uh, I'm just going to remove it a little bit here, but it will start uh, to uh, come down pretty soon. And I will begin stirring now. And the reason I stir now is because of something that I've seen. Don't over stir. People start kibitzing and start telling you you're over stirring and it'll have this or that effect and even though I've never had any of this effects um, I've had a, I'm annoyed by kibitzers and I will assume they might just be right and uh, just do it enough to ensure the grounds get wet okay and that's it and now we're trying to do we're trying to aim at what every barista I've ever seen in a siphon bar tries to do and it's get this kind of globe effect at the end and I don't think I'm going to get it today because you know how it is okay no, I didn't really get it, but um, I have. I've got. I can. I got, you know what I may do? I may uh, cheat and go uh, post a, a photo below uh, from my f tremendous photo collections because I actually take pictures of them. I think it's a little bit strange, but you know, <laughs> if you can't be eccentric, uh, okay, uh, what can you be? All right, and then we've uh, we've done that. We now have, and it's uh, it's uh, about three minutes in. If it's under four minutes, you've made the you've made the range for you know just like uh, drip br brewing is uh, four to six minutes contact time. The siphon brewing is uh, considered one to four minutes is appropriate uh, siphon range. I would say. Uh, uh, and now I used a slightly coarser grind for this, and there's a reason I did that. Um, I've done that over the years. I've just found, again, like my colleague, oh, colleague, he's a world barista champ. I'm hardly a colleague of his, but uh, I mend it at his feet. But I definitely um, think that it's, uh, I'm certainly an experienced uh, siphon user, and I, I definitely find... Uh, Coarser means there's a more, uh, I guess uh, you would call it a uh, fudge factor. <laughs> That's the technical term. Uh, that means you can, if you're off a little bit, it doesn't make much difference. Uh, so, and you'll see that it comes down right here. If you use a flame, you have to extinguish the flame. Uh, I don't need to. I use a commercial uh, uh, beam heater, which I find extremely uh, 
satisfying, especially since I have to t travel with it and I, I, I do a lot of uh, presentations. For some reason, people always ask for the siphon. Uh, now, let's uh, give you a little bit of background on this. Uh, and, and by the way, the siphon is ideal for friends who complain that the coffee is never hot enough. And I'm married to a person like that. I have a number of friends like that. Uh, and one of my parents was like that. I can't remember which one right now, but I, it'll come to me. I, for some reason, I think it was my dad. Always liked his coffee super hot. Uh, it, hotter than I think is good for you. But anyway, that's my opinion. So, let's, uh, you don't even have to pre-warm, you know, I, I pre-warm my wife's cup of coffee when I make it for her in a Chemex. I don't have to uh, do that. Uh, here, wh uh, which one of these is going to get this shot of me pouring the cup? Do you want me to pour it there? Oh, which, that, that, that one, ah, I see, I see. Okay, well, let's see, what can I do? I can take this out of the way and put this down here. I'm going to use this, by the way, in a second, so I am going to use that. Okay, and then let me uh, pour this uh, into this uh, cup. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to pre-warm uh, or scald your cups with uh, boiling water for this method. This is going to be uh, Pat's coffee because she really likes it super hot. This is going to be John McCourtney's coffee, and he's he never gets his coffee until uh, last, so uh, it's got, I'm not going to do anything else but just set it there for him. And then, uh, unless he's figured out a way, I noticed he's installed a cup holder on the camera. And then, what What do I do? You're, um, you wanted to show your cooling oh, device. Oh, thank you. Kibitzers. Okay, and then, <laughs> thank you, though. I really did want to do that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and this is this is great because this is was invented by I, I you saw this early in the year if you're a regular watcher um, this was invented by a, a, a an in, college professor an engineer I can't remember but he's some sort of expert on on uh, health and he said you know people drink their coffee especially if they're being you know bullied now to drink their coffee without any cream or sweetener in it. Um, <laughs> cup shaming uh they're uh <laughs> they're they're trying to uh, well this is mine and you want to make sure he said you got to drink your coffee at 149 or lower he, of course he makes it an odd number like that but i do remember it so professor you're right and then that's called drink now at least it was this iteration i don't know what he's calling it today but it's uh but i'll tell you what it is great Forgetting safety for a second, <laughs> let's get to the important thing, taste. It really tastes better for me. I really can find, hmm. It's the perfect drinking temperature, and I can get the complexity out of it that I normally have to wait, I would say, uh, three or four minutes to get it to this, um, to, a, to a safe drinking temperature, and again, a complex drinking temperature where I'm getting those layers. It's kind of like uh, those of you who are wine drinkers, when you pour a wine, I had a taste of a beautiful Chardonnay last night, uh, but it was a little bit too chilled. You know, someone, uh, well, it was only, it could be one person, uh, chilled it and uh, it was just left in the refrigerator and it had a little bit too much uh, cold and we had to we have back a question. Off. I do have a question. And this is from uh, J.G. So how does it taste compared to the Chemex? Well, it's a, it has more of the acidity. And that is what, what I'm, I'm referring to acidity as what I call the bright high end. If we think of it in audio terms, which I like to use a lot of audio analogies, forgive me, as, a, as, a, as a, uh, an amateur musician and, uh, and, a, and a chronic uh, music lover, uh, it has more high end. 
it it has that. It has a, uh, however, the Chemex has a beautiful burnished quality to its high end that is, that is really uh, seductive, and the Chemex is still cooler, a little bit cooler than this. Uh, the heat definitely makes it impossible to do an actual, you know, just, and, I, and I'm not coming from drinking a Chemex, having uh, had a Chemex this morning, actually had this this morning before. I would say there is definitely more in this cup, meaning more of the, of the complexity coming forth that I would have to wait uh, with a Chemex for it to cool slightly to get. I understand that we're talking about this at a hotter temperature, but I'm saying, therefore, it's a, it's a bigger cup. I think there's more, the, se the sense is there's more um, of the dissolved solids in this cup than there would be in a Chemex. Now, I, I can play, certainly tweak my recipe with a Chemex, uh, and I, I certainly am not saying you know, in reality, I love them all. This is like asking me which of my favorite, uh, who's my favorite child. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, it is impossible. It is impossible, too, if you have children. It's impossible to think, who's my best friend? Well, I could have a friend who's closest to me right now, but you know, it's certainly John McCourney. But uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's a great, that is a great question. Uh, and, and I would say, I hope that's a, that's a, a, a fair answer. Um, but definitely, this is a hotter cup of coffee, and that uh, changes things too. But definitely, there is more. If I were trying to, and this gets to the George Hall analogy, if I'm trying to taste, if I get a coffee, and to me the coffee is not really coming forth with as much flavor as I kind of hoped it would have, and I did try it at Chemex, I will take it to the siphon because I think the siphon is a, is a, is a higher resolution method. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it's perfect. I, I, it's sort of like comparing solid state to tubes if you're talking about sound. Tubes have a burnished quality to them that is not, not known to be a higher resolution, but it is a euphonious distortion. It is a, it is a, it is a more of something, uh, the sense of something, without there being as much an analytical to it. Whereas m many people say that uh, solid state uh, amplification, for instance, has more of a, uh, a, a more uh, detail in it, but not necessarily to the same burnished degree. And I would say it's a very similar experience. I would say the Chemex is more like a tube, and this is more like a solid state. Digital frames. Okay, it may interest you to know that the siphon was once the most popular home brewing method, in, in the, certainly in the U.S., perhaps the world. Company names such as Silex, Sunbeam, have you ever heard of the coffee robot? Google the coffee robot, you've got time today. And others were common brands, and it was a great time for coffee lovers. Only post-World War II brought the pumping percolator. Do you realize this was at one time called the percolator? I'm going to percolate some coffee, you'll hear uh, May Robeson say in a 1930s musical. <laughs> I don't know if she was in a 1930s musical, but she was in some movie in the 1930s. And, and she's referring to the siphon. She's not referring to, well, I shouldn't say that. There were, there were some stovetop percolators. But the pumping percolator was the one sold to the GI generation my parents and some of your grandparents as simplifying and time-saving, displacing the vacuum, which was, again, the original percolator in U.S. homes. Look, I'm, uh, Alfred, I got... Alfred Coleman, uh, the second uh, Alfred. Ask, how is the cleanup? Alfred Coleman, the second, clean up with this. I don't know. You'll have to ask Pat. I think it's terrible. I, you know, <laughs> I actually do the cleanup. The uh, uh, don't 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 worry. Uh, <laughs> at least don't worry. Don't come testify for her. Uh, the uh, this is um, the cleanup of the of the siphon is its work. I mean, it's like a in that way. Uh, yeah. I mean, this has got to be afterwards. I all and I always. You know, unless I've really uh, had a lot to drink the night before. No, if, if I, I really am very fastidious about it. Uh, I try never to leave this get totally cold. I don't know if it matters or not, but I, I'll take this upstairs. I'll disassemble it. 
And someday we'll have to do a clip of me cleaning a siphon. In fact, it's not a bad idea uh, to uh, just show you uh, what it what it is involves. It is it is a um, it is more than uh, uh, certainly when you, if you want to compare it to automatic drip or the K cup, yeah, they both win. Uh, they're both easy. They're they're just simple. You just you know. You, uh, you, at the, at the very best, well, I suppose, uh, of us, we uh, we take our uh, grounds and we uh, we put them in uh, compost, and then the uh, the rather uh, we throw out, or we toss, or uh, recycle anything else. Or if we use a permanent gold filter, we just use this whatever amount of water it takes to fully uh, clean it. But it certainly um, the siphon is is more maintenance than that. There's no doubt. I will tell you that we are uh, had a uh, thought yesterday. We're uh, actually uh, we are con we are considering we are we are, we'd love to uh, find a way to uh, collaborate with the Specialty Coffee Association. They have had to cancel their trade show this year, which is an expo, which is usually which is going to be held in in uh, Portland. And I would really like to. Uh, see if we can come to Portland perhaps in the fall and uh, hold a coffee con there. So we're considering that and uh, have a West Coast event. We will have a Chicago event, and this is assuming that we're, we're, we're having any events in the fall, but I, I think right now we're, we're hopeful that uh, come June or beyond we will start having some uh, events like this again and uh, we'll get the all clear. I'm certainly not going to do anything uh, with anyone's uh, it would be reckless, but I would love to have one, and we're going to see if there's a possibility of some collaboration. I know they have a World uh, uh, Barista uh, Championship that's held on the West Coast in the fall, uh, or this year. It was going to be held at this event, and uh, we can't replace their trade show. That's a huge world event, but that's, that's not what I want to do anyway. I just want to uh, partner with them. And the possibility of coming to Portland, I know Portland's got to be reeling from not having uh, SCA there. And a uh, little old coffee con, I think, would be a fun thing. Uh, there are a lot of home brewers, uh, coffee uh, aficionados in the Portland area uh, that would uh, have never had a coffee con. So we would, uh, we just, it just came up yesterday. I'm going to float the idea and see if it happens. If you know anyone at the SCA, maybe you could put in a good word for us. Uh, meanwhile, don't forget, I've got a link down below for my patron uh, page. And uh, before I have to send the link to my mother uh, and tell her Christmas is coming, you know, my birthday, uh, I thought I would uh, uh, ask uh, nicely here. And we uh, can buy uh, more more fun things like this. But we well, also, more important is this gear and stuff like that. This is... Uh, what I uh, what I do, and I'm I'm determined to keep doing these. Uh, we got a, a couple of other shows we're trying to do. We're trying to do you know these. We're trying to do some uh, read some vintage coffee uh, companion articles, and we're also trying to uh, uh, have some interviews and get a Skype thing going where I can start getting. I've got a darn good Rolodex, and you know it's about time George Hall visited with us. But I don't see George. Really, I think I've admitted that George is not is going to continue to turn down my invitation to come spend the summer with us. How can we be Diana Sport? And uh, I definitely would love to see uh, him via Skype. And uh, I was talking to Oren Bluestein yesterday, my pal in uh, Manhattan, and he's uh, he would love to come visit. And we're we're already planning on uh, that one. So you know, get some of these uh, luminaries or Christy Thorns. I know Christy's out there from a. Uh, Allegro, uh, Allegro Coffee, and she's uh, if she's not at Origin right now, I don't know where she is actually, but she's a world traveler, and she's certainly got a lot of great coffee knowledge, and I would love to bring her in through a, a Skype interview. I, I long to have them right here in the studio with us, but that's just not, if it's n never, if it's going to be possible, it's certainly not going to be possible in the very near future here, I accept that. Anyway, I hope everything is well, by the way, with you and your family. Please uh, feel free uh, to uh, post any uh, notes to us. I think my if my phone number is not on the Internet, I'm sure my uh, email address is, and you can always reach us through our uh, down below, or whether you're watching us on Facebook or, or any of the uh, uh, other uh, places we, uh, we get to uh, on Facebook uh, or, uh, or YouTube. Thank you. I'm Coffee Kevin, and we'll talk to you real soon.